What's up, everybody? It's your boy Alamo from Bass Holes Kayak Fishing and Southern Moon Outfitters here in Augusta, Georgia. I'm going to go ahead and let the bass out of the net. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you some of my personal settings for the GoPro, my tips and tricks to help you get up to speed, shoot better video, edit better video, and produce better quality video. So stay tuned. Wake up before the sun come up. Truck back, back in the back, ready to attack. Gotta hit the road, cause I gotta go. I'm off to my favorite fishing holes. Bash holes! So I'm pretty sure that most of you are shooting with the GoPro or some other type of action camera. That's awesome. You're living the dream, you're capturing it, and you're trying to share it. If all you want to do is capture video, hit play, and record, cool. Don't waste your time watching this. If you want to expand and try to do something better, I'm going to share something with you right now. So the GoPro is made out of the box to shoot. Now, it is a regular camera, so you can delve deeper into this little fiend's brain. By going into the preferences, you can swipe to the left, and it's gonna pop up something like this. It'll have settings. If you change these settings, you're going to change the way that the GoPro perceives the world that you're trying to capture. Me personally, I want to have control over that perception. I don't want the GoPro to automatically shoot what I am trying to create. So what I have done is I've changed my settings to this. First thing you're probably noticing is Mo. You're shooting in 1080? Why aren't you capturing the world in 4K vision? Number one, because you do not see in 4K. Number two, most computers nowadays, unless it is a brand flipping new, really expensive computer, will not edit nor render 4K footage. Number three, when you go to render down that 4K footage, you still have to compress it into 1080 or 1440 to be able to put it on the internet. So what is the point of shooting 4K? Takes up a lot of space, wastes memory on your computer, and you still have to drop it back down. It's like an MP3 versus vinyl record, man. Like I said, you've noticed, I shoot 1080 at 60 frames per second, because if I want to speed something up or drop it down, that double frame, 60 frames per second, is going to allow me to have no stutter in my stuff. Um, I shoot linear. I like up close. I'm sure you've seen a lot of GoPro footage where it looks like the skyline and the horizons, like this big fisheye thing. I don't like it. I hate it. It drives me nuts. I'd rather have a more cinematic approach, so I shoot linear or narrow audio. Audio is a huge issue. If you're not using a lavalier clip mic, go ahead, kick your audio up. There's a way to fix it in post. I'll show you how to do that later. If you're using a lavalier, turn it off. The settings that I have posted here over my left shoulder are the settings that I use. The reason why I use these is I like to shoot flat. I don't want GoPro to put color in where I don't want color to be. I like to go into post-production and add my color like this, or like this, or like this. That allows me to make the film that I'm presenting to you look the way that I want it to shoot. If I use GoPro's color and I try to go back and color it, it's gonna look like crap because now you have two colors going on top of it. It's like a bad house DJ. I don't want that mix. One of the other important things I want to stress is buy an external hard drive. You do not want to upload GoPro footage to your computer. Why? It takes up a plethora of space. If you took eight hours of footage and uploaded it into your little simpleton computer, more than likely your simpleton computer is not going to work anymore terabyte hard drives are cheap. Buy a terabyte hard drive, a two terabyte hard drive, three terabyte. Bigger is better, whatever you can afford. Create a path when you upload that saves all your files to that hard drive. It will save you the world's biggest pain in the butt. All right, next thing I want to talk about is software. I don't care if you're a PC guy or girl or a Mac guy or girl. I personally use Mac because they're bomb proof. I own many Macs. I use Final Cut Pro. One software I would recommend that is free is DaVinci Resolve. 
all of the everything that I'm saying is going to be logged in down on the bottom. You can check out the website. DaVinci Resolve is an industry standarding software. Cost about twelve hundred dollars. The free version is free. The difference is it doesn't have some of the bells and whistles, but you don't need those. The free version is going to have a little bit of a learning curve, but if you put 10, 15 minutes in and watch some YouTube videos, you'll be up to speed, and I guarantee you, you'll be excellent at what you're trying to achieve. All right, so I've showed you some of my GoPro settings. Now I'm going to show you some of my tips and tricks. We all know that the GoPro battery is crap. It doesn't last but an hour, hour and a half, especially if you're using Wi-Fi, voice command, whatever. You're out fishing. You got one at the back of your boat. I've been out there in the middle of the lake. I hear beep, 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 beep. I got to turn around. I got to crawl my fat butt back to the kayak, change out a battery and come back. I figured something out. This is the Digi Power Refuel. I bought this on Amazon. Um, you can get them at Best Buy. They're about 40 to 50 bucks. What this is, is a GoPro waterproof case for your GoPro. So your GoPro basically pops in there like that. You lock it down, put it on your stand, whatever you're going to do. Turn your GoPro on. You hit the button over here. This will give you six to 10 hours of battery ridiculous it weighs maybe half pound um, ridiculous time saver I use two of them I use one in the front one in the back ridiculous I team that up with a GoPro remote so what I'll do is I turn the Bluetooth on this thing will keep your battery charged at a hundred percent for ten hours ten hours your smart card is probably only going to get six and a half, seven hours of footage. That's enough for a whole day of fishing. And if I don't got to shoot continuously and I don't got to go home and edit all that crap, this is awesome. This is the best way to go. This is the best thing I found. This is like sliced bread, like mayonnaise for fish and stuff. I don't know. I mean, like this was the fish's stuff. This is the fish's stuff. So this paired with your GoPro will give you 10 hours. Then you tag this little dude into it. And you can turn it on and off. So you don't have to shoot 10 hours. You can get out and be like, I'm going to set up fish, cast fish, do your thing. Beep, 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 go on to the next. Beep, 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 go on to the next. Ingenious. I love it. The other thing that I found is one of the problems that I was having when I was out fishing is the glare from the water and the sun. The sun would come and you get, you know, it was just terrible. So I found the Telesyn polarized filter. It's just a little itty bitty filter that pops on your GoPro like such so now you have a polarized filter so when you're out fishing front camera your back camera is going to eliminate all that glare another thing i want to share for you to help you do your videos a little bit better is uh, a gimbal you might not know what a gimbal is. a gimbal is basically a cool little thing it does so you put your camera in there and what this allows you to do is it allows you to get smooth footage as you're moving around um, this is the GoPro gimbal specifically for the GoPros. You can control your GoPro. You can turn it on and off. Um, you can get them for your phone as well. A lot of people don't take into consideration that your phone has got one of the best cameras on it and one of the best microphones. Speaking of microphones, I use the Zoom F1 LP. And what this is, is it's basically a broadcast microphone lavalier. You can hook it anywhere you want and discreetly plug somewhere and uh, it records to you know a little smart card so that allows me to not have to rely on the camera's audio i can go to this i can shoot the cameras and i can give you the best quality production that i can possibly give you that's what i'm striving for is if you're going to take two or three minutes out of your time to watch a video or learn something i want to be able to take time out of my schedule to provide you with the best quality content so that's one of the other things that I want to go over is if you're just trying to capture video of you fishing and show it to your friends and whatever, you don't have to go into the editing aspect. You don't have to go into all this. Now, if you're trying to produce content that you want people to take time out of their day to sit down and watch, you need to step up your game. You need to learn and take time out of your schedule to learn the editing aspect, be able to produce a video that people want to watch because they're not going to watch it if it sounds like crap or it looks like crap. Uh, 
you know, it, that's what this whole video is about, is getting you guys up to par to produce better video content. I'm off to my favorite fish holes, bass holes, tiny little fish that I like to go, bass holes, kayak fishing shows.